potassium chlorate, KClO3, decomposes to potassium chloride, KCl, and oxygen gas, O2, when heated. Manganese 4 oxide, MnO2, is added to speed up the reaction. The oxygen gas produced in the reaction can be collected by bubbling it through water and collecting it in a bottle or graduated cylinder. As oxygen gas is generated, the gas bubbles rise to the top and displace water from the cylinder. This method of collecting a gas is based on the assumptions that the gas does not react with water and that it is not appreciably soluble in it. The oxygen gas collected in this manner is not pure because water vapor is also present in the cylinder. The total gas pressure is equal to the sum of the pressures exerted by the oxygen gas and the water vapor. Consequently, we must allow for the pressure of water vapor when we calculate the amount of O2 generated. The partial pressure of O2 equals the total pressure minus the pressure due to water vapor. Gases via water displacement. Um, so, as you saw in the previous video, when you collect gas using this method, inevitably there's a little bit of water vapor that enters the system. <coughs> And uh, so we're going to have to subtract off this value if we are going to get an accurate uh, measure of how much of the particular gas we're looking at is in the system. <coughs> and so uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned is that uh, this is going to be dependent on the temperature. <coughs> so you can see here we've got a table and uh, on it we've got temperatures that are in degrees Celsius and they correspond with a vapor pressure the water is exerting at that particular temperature. So we're going to need to be wary of this when we're doing a question that mentions something about a gas being collected via water displacement. So let's take a look at one. So let's determine the mass of 400 mils of carbon dioxide if it's collected at 20 degrees Celsius and 150 kilopascals. It's a rather large pressure. So what's going on is we've got an experiment here and carbon dioxide is being given off and you can see the uh, carbon dioxide molecules are collecting inside of the water and what they're of course going to do is they're going to start to push the water down and it's going to end up looking like this. And so in this question here that missing volume is going to be 400 milliliters. <coughs> so first thing we're going to have to do in this particular question is adjust our pressure. So, we've got our equation here, our total pressure, so this is Dalton's law of partial pressure. So total pressure is equal to the pressure of carbon dioxide plus water. So at 150, that is our total. And we know at 20 degrees Celsius here, we've got a vapor pressure of 234. So that's where 234 is there. And some quick rearranging and a little bit of mathematics. And we discover that our pressure exerted by the carbon dioxide is in fact 147.66. So now we can proceed to the pervnert, the ideal gas law, PVNRT, and let's fill in what we know. We just uh, determined a new pressure. We've got our volume from the question at 0.4. We'll work in liters because we're using the gas constant 8.3145, which was derived using liters. Our temperature is 273 plus our 20 degrees. So the temperature for this question is 293.15, and we are in fact finding moles. So you can write down the pervnert, you can rearrange 4n, you can sub in the particular numbers that you're going to be using, and you can get an, a rather large n value of 41.267. And we're not done this question because it's asking us to find mass, so there's uh, one extra step here. So we will take our known number of 41.23 moles of carbon dioxide and we'll set up our expression here we will cancel out the moles of carbon dioxide and simple multiplication gives us 18 15.75 that's the final answer so earlier in the video you saw um, a video that used potassium chlorate so why don't we do a question with that. So let's determine the volume of oxygen gas produced at SATP if it's collected via water displacement from the decomposition of 40 grams. So we got this 40 grams and I think our first shot, our first thought should be that it is a mole map question. So we are given the mass of substance A. So that's gonna be our first step. We're gonna find the moles of this uh, particular solid. 
So it's a solid to gas question. It's those two values we're gonna be using. And let's get to that first step here. So in step one, we're gonna find the moles of KClO3, knowing that we have our 40 grams. So here is what we're doing. We're gonna take our mass, we'll set up our expression. One moles is equal to, that's our molar mass. We can cancel out the grams, and so it becomes 40 divided by 122.5. So fire that into your calculator and you get 0.326. So right now we've arrived at the moles of substance A. Now we're heading towards a mole ratio for step two and that'll give us the moles of substance B. And the moles of substance B is the other substance. And the other substance in this question is oxygen gas. So in step two here, let's get the moles of oxygen gas. Let's carry that number from our uh, last, uh, last step there and we'll set up our mole ratio. Our mole ratio is coming from the balanced equation. So we've got two moles of KClO3 up top. That's where that's coming from. And we've got three moles of oxygen O2 here. Put that up on the top, cancel out some units. And we should end up with 0.49. I've rounded a little bit on screen here, but I have not cleared my calculator because I think it was 0.48 and then a, a few other numbers here. So as we proceed on to our final step, by the way, we're right here right now. We found the moles of A. This question is asking us to the volume of a gas. And so this is gonna be the volume of our gas right here. And so in step three, well, I guess even before we get to that, we need to adjust our pressure, right? That's the whole point of this water displacement question. So we are at ST, uh, sorry, we're at SATP. So that means we're at 298, which means we're at 25 degrees Celsius. So we need the vapor pressure 3.17 in this part of the question. The, uh, the 100 is of course coming from the STP temperature and pressure, I should say. So we're just gonna do a little subtraction move there and we get 96.83. So now we can finish this question off here. We can proceed to our final step, our step three, where we're finding the volume of our gas now that we've adjusted our, vol uh, adjusted our pressure. So we've got 96.83. We've got our moles. Again, not clear to, uh, it's not rounded on my calculator, but I did round here slightly. Gas constant, 298 for our temperature. We're gonna find volume. And as you might have noticed, our volume equation is currently rearranged on our mole map there. So we'll start with that. And now it's just a matter of plugging in the values. I got a little lazy and instead of writing 8.3145, I just wrote R, but I knew that's what it stood for. And if you calculate it, you should get 12.53. So there are the two types of questions we're going to encounter. There could be a mole map question or there could be a sort of a non mole map question where it's just about one substance like the very first question when it just discussed carbon dioxide.